this video, I'm going to show you how I go about fixing this little void that I have. Um, when I cast the, this pin blank, it looked like this, and uh, it has this little opening here that was blocked off by the wood when it extended out that far. So once I started trimming this down here on the lathe, you can see that I have quite a, quite a void there. Now I want to fill this in. I mean, it looks cool, but I do want to have something in there before I put the finish on because that's just going to be too soft of an area and this pen will break from that. So rather than start over and make another uh, one of these blanks here, I'm going to try to fill this in. And what I'm going to try to do it with is uh, this five minute epoxy by BH, uh, BSI. And I find that um, the five minute epoxy cures nice and quick, makes it kind of easy to, to work with. And um, you can also color this too. So what I do is I'll get my color out here and I'm gonna use the cherry color for this. Now, if you need to, uh, the epoxy, this epoxy can be thinned down with um, alcohol. So uh, if you have some denatured alcohol, you can do that. Uh, I've used just rubbing alcohol to thin it down before and it doesn't seem to have any ill effects on it. But before I do that, what I wanna do is I wanna tape off one side of this pin blank here uh, so that the hole doesn't leak. So I'm gonna go across this way, I think, on it. And I think I will do that right after I put a little bit of glue in there um, so that that way it seals it and it doesn't allow it to drip through. But I don't wanna seal it off completely right yet because um, sometimes you create an air pocket in there and then you, know, you start working on it and you have another void. So um, get a little bit of this red here, not too much. There we go. All right, so let's mix up this five minute. Now, five minute epoxy only has so much time, five minutes, huh? And um, so you have to work rather quickly. So that's what I'm gonna try to do. The good thing about this epoxy is it's, it's relatively thick on its own. So um, hopefully it will hold the shape and you can wait a little bit if you want to um, apply it. Uh, that way you get a thicker, uh, um, a solidified product in there. All right, so, and I want to try and get into this part too, over here. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to push in as much as I can into it. So that way it pushes it through and you can tell that it's doing that because it's pushing it through on that side. So the main thing is to get rid of all the air. And probably been a good idea to just start pushing it through on one side. I see now my air in the way here. That's okay. Get around this here too. That's got a little soft spot here. So I want to fill that in if I can with the epoxy. Now the epoxy glue itself has, uh, as compared to the resin, although the resin has very good sticking qualities, the epoxy glue is made to adhere to surfaces. So um, this is going to get a nice stick on everything. So you have five minutes to work with this. Um, you can figure out how you want to do that because it is going to rotate or uh, um, uh, move around. If you keep it in one direction, it's eventually going to slide all out. So what I'm going to do is bring my tape on around here and basically bring it down along the edges here. And uh, come on around, try to leave a little bit of gap in the center there so that it builds up around my hole there. So, and I'm just gonna leave that alone for five, 10 minutes, and we'll see what it looks like here in a minute. And I'll show you how to sand that down to get it back to the shape that you want. Um, I don't know if I'd use uh, regular turning tools on epoxy glue, um, but I, I think I don't have any problem using sandpaper, but I'll show you. Uh, how to sand this so you get it flat and level again. 
So we'll come back when this is dry. Okay, so I set my timer for five minutes and you can see that uh, it's pretty tacky stuff right now. It's stuck there pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna try to slowly peel off this tape and hopefully it doesn't stick too much to this tape, but we'll soon see. Okay, yeah, so it's not too bad. So you can see that I'm pulling this off slowly. And now, because it says five minute epoxy, it doesn't mean that it's 100% cured. All right, so um, you can see that that's got a pretty nice buildup on it. It's uh, covering in everything. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this go ahead and dry for about an hour or two until it becomes uh, really, really uh, stiff and hard. Uh, that way, when I go to sand it, it's actually sanding and it's not just dragging um, bits off because it's not fully uh, cured yet. So we'll let this cure for a little while longer and we'll use this as an example. So when this gets to where I can tap on it and it makes a good noise and you don't see imprints in the glue, uh, then I know that this glue will be hard enough to take back on the lathe and uh, start sanding that down. See you in a sec. Okay, so I got it back on the lathe here, and I think um, what I did was I waited till when I hit it with my nail, it doesn't dig in. It still feels like it might be just a tiny bit soft, but it's, it's pretty solid right now. And it's been, um, let's see, 33 minutes since, the, since uh, I pulled the tape off. So I'm gonna go ahead and try it with a negative rake scraper. I think uh, that might work. So I'll just take nice, easy cuts on it and see how that comes out. Here's our piece now. It has still has that nice looking grain on the wood there. Uh, have a little hole there, but I'm okay with that one. The, the big thing about that, that was the large hole and that would have uh, reduced the strength of this pin. So I think if somebody would have really uh, held somewhat tight on that, they would have, they would have actually busted that. So let me, uh, let me just do this real quick so we can see what that looks like. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some Axe Sanding Abrasive, or Abrasive Sanding Paste, I should say it, in the proper order and uh, put a little bit of this on it. And just so that we can sand this thing down a little bit and get an idea as to how it looks. And I'll turn this as slow as I can on this particular belt location here, which is not all that slow. Oh, it's 600, so that's not too bad. And I'm just cleaning this up a little bit so you can see the, the result of our our efforts here. And I'll just run this across to get all the abrasive paste or as much as I can off there. I'm speeding up just to get a nice clean capture on this. Get all of that axe abrasive sanding paste off there. And here you go. And so now we have a um, piece that actually blends in pretty decent there. Uh, and it's nice and solid there where we have that soft spot. So I'm gonna let that cure a little bit more before I start working on the um, the rest of the pen doing the finish on here. So that's um, that's going. Ahead. That's repairing a spot that has a little gap in it. Uh, once you get these pens down, sometimes this burl wood, you're not sure exactly what it's going to do. I mean, it looks just beautiful, but um, you know, you never know what's going to happen. And so, if you do get a void in there, uh, you can't fill it in with uh, the five-minute epoxy and some color resin. So I like the way that's looking. And I think, uh, I think it might've been a little bit better if I left it maybe overnight uh, to cure completely, but uh, a little bit anxious and wanted you guys to see this while everything was still set up. So uh, 
It's still gonna be a nice looking pin when this is done. Okay, so uh, if you wanna see uh, the finished result in this pin, I'm actually gonna show how to do a finish on this particular pin here, a combination of um, epoxy, resin, and wood. And I'm actually gonna use a, um, a CA finish on that. So if you want to check that out, uh, check the other video that's gonna be out on it and uh, hope to see you in, or hope to be seen by you in the next video.